is supposed to be unblemished. So the red heifer is supposed to be unblemished without spot because if it has just one, then it's not going to qualify as the red heifer. Now what's very salient about this is this is a very rare breed. In fact, in all of Israel's history, there are only a few, only a few. That's why they're waiting for this red heifer. So I'm going to keep reading right here. You'll notice in verse 3 that they're supposed to slay them. Verse 4, it's supposed to be before the tabernacle of the congregation. So thus, this is normally done in a ordinance, a ritual, a temple tabernacle setting. You'll notice that at verse 5, they completely burn the red heifer. In verse 6, uh, they take cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet, and they cast it in the midst of the burning heifer. Then in verse 7, uh, they wash their clothes. Verse 8, they burn, and they wash their clothes. And then verse 9, they take up the ashes of the red heifer. And then verse 10, they gather up the ashes of the red heifer, and they do washing as well. So this is supposed to represent purification for sin. That's what it's supposed to represent, the red heifer. So that's why... When they're, reading, they're waiting for this red heifer to be born, they, then thus you can get the third temple running. And once you have the third temple, you know what that means. Then you can have the tribulation running. You can have the rapture running. Amen. Now, the reason why this red heifer is so salient is because the first time that we see it, according to here, this one is by uh, Rabbi Chaim Richmond. I don't know if I pronounce his name right, but in his uh, book, The Mystery of the Red Heifer, Divine Promise of Purity, Chapter 10, Conclusion, the 10th Red Heifer, he writes right here, the Mishnah teaches that up until the destruction of the second temple, ashes had been prepared from a total of only nine red heifers. The very first red heifer was processed by Moses himself. As the verse states, have them bring you a red heifer. The second was done by the prophet Ezra in the days of the first temple. And during the entire era of the second temple, only seven more heifers were used for ashes. So you'll notice that it was only nine throughout all of Israel's history. Nine throughout Israel's history. Now here's the other interesting thing that you may not have noticed. The last time we had number nine, you know when it was? It was when Jerusalem fell. So he reads right here. Thus from the time that Moses received the commandment of the red heifer from the Holy One, blessed be he, until the destruction of the second temple, purifying ashes had been produced by the hands of these great leaders from a total of nine red heifers. If there has been no red heifer for the past 2,000 years, because the time was not right. He also writes right here, uh, until the destruction of the second temple, you've heard that, right? So their second temple, which is when Titus came in, and then during the uh, Rome, Jerusalem's destruction. You may remember that the last time Israel became a nation was when Titus besieged Jerusalem and Jerusalem fell. That's when Israel lost her nation until 1947 to 1948. That was the last time they had that red heifer. It was the ninth one, coincidentally, that time. So during this whole thousands of years, this one is going to be the tenth. But you know what's so interesting about this number? The rabbi claims, in recounting this historical record in his commentary to the Mishnah, the great Mammonides ends with the enigmatic statement, and the tenth, quote, and the tenth red heifer will be accomplished by the king, the Messiah. May he be revealed speedily. Amen. May it be God's will. So this was predicted according to one of their commentaries in the Mishnah. So they're waiting for that tenth red heifer. That's why this thing is a big deal. Now, you know what's also very interesting is that go to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. Now, you'll notice what number is this heifer? 10, right? 
What's the number of the Gentiles? Oh, man. Right. Oh. Ten. Are we in Israel's time period? We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. Yeah. In other words, we believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people and the right time period. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to combine all the verses together and come up with major wrong doctrine. So you'll notice right here that there, we can generalize this to four main time periods. There are more distinct time periods, but we'll just generalize this to four. So we are in the church age. That's where we're at. The Old Testament, we already passed that. This is the tribulation, and after that, the millennial reign of Christ. So this is Israel's dealing, right? But what happened with Israel? God turned from Israel and turned to who? The Gentiles. That's why this era is the era of the Gentiles. And then God's going to go back to who during the tribulation? He's going to go back to Israel again in these two dispensations. But right now, it's the Gentiles. Isn't it a coincidence at their ninth red heifer? And then why? Because at the tenth era right here, the Gentiles. And it's known as the fullness of the Gentiles. Let's look right here, Romans chapter 11, verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel. See that? Blindness. God is ignoring them in the church age today. They're done. Until what? The fullness of the Gentiles be come in. See that? Until this is all fulfilled with the Gentiles, then he switches back. Then Gentiles, they still continue throughout this tribulation, but he's switching during the tribulation from Gentile to Israel. We're waiting for it to be full over here now. So when this is filled up, when this is filled up, then, hey, it could be any moment that Jesus Christ is going to be coming real soon. Isn't that interesting? Not only that, just keep reading right here. In, the red heifer is supposed to represent forgiveness, right? Purification of sin. So uh, this is even according to the Jewish teachings too. So I'm going by secular Jewish teachings, not just scripture. In the scripture, we know that red heifer is supposed to represent forgiveness of the nation of Israel. But guess what? Even Judaism acknowledges that too. That's why they're waiting for that red heifer to come out so that their nation can be completed in their forgiveness and God can deal with them again in the future. Because keep reading here, verse 25, when the fullness of the Gentiles, right? When it's all fulfilled, look at verse 26. And so all Israel, so that proves it's national, shall be what? saved see that national salvation as it is written there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob see that he's turning away from the sins so they get national forgiveness for this is my covenant unto them when I shall see future tense it didn't happen yet shall what take away their sins see proof of national forgiveness that's why they're waiting for that red heifer, because the national forgiveness can commence and God can come down and then reign over Israel. So this red heifer is a very significant thing. It can represent the rapture. Or, I'm giving another option here. This is going to be surprising. Or, it could be something else. It could be something very dark. Because this red heifer, you know how they produce this red heifer? It was not through natural means by God. It was, they used science and genetics for this. They were using tampering stuff. This is found at the article of the Jerusalem Post, August 13, 2015. And it reads right here. The, uh, so the title of the article at the Jerusalem Post is The Quest for the Red Heifer, An Ancient Commandment Meets Modern Technology. Quote, the campaign is going quite well, but it has had its challenges, Rabbi Richmond tells the Post. This is about the reintroduction of a concept that's really quite ancient and doing it in a, so they're trying to adapt this, turn this into a very modern way with the latest technology. Uh, 
It's procuring one of the most elusive commandments with modern technology. So notice that they're trying to bring in their Messiah, their own full restoration as a nation through technological means, not by God's own means. Yeah. Who's going to use the technology oh, yeah. to reign in Israel mm -hmm. and claim he's the Messiah? Ooh. How about that? Quite a twist now in this video, right? Yeah. This is quite a twist. Amen. In order for a heifer to be considered kosher for the biblical use, it must be raised from birth under specific circumstances and in a controlled environment. To this end, the Temple Institute has joined forces with experienced cattle ranchers in Israel who will utilize the technique of implanting the frozen embryos of red Angus cattle in Israeli domestic cattle. Thus far, the campaign has raised some $33,000 with the help of people from all over the world. Can I tell you something? God don't need your money, don't need your science and technology Amen. to have him come again. Amen. You'll notice right here, this is very interesting. Could this be something that's making a way for the Antichrist? If this is a success and it's without blemish, this red heifer, through technological means, could it be that the Antichrist can come in and because he's a Syrian Jew and because he is connected as a pope, connected with Islam as well and Judaism, and then he's going to be multicultural and the nation of America will back him up, he comes in and then he says, I'm the Messiah, I'm the one wow. you've been waiting for. I give you national forgiveness. That's why, hey, wow. Arabs... Jews, let's sign the covenant together. All is forgiven. All is reconciled. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. Quite a twist. Because look what he says right here. This is what the, the Jews are waiting for if this is a success. Considering that the vision of the prophets of Israel describes the holy temple in Jerusalem as a house of prayer and peace. So Israel, the main site of peace for what? All nations, one world. This is an opportunity for Jews and Gentiles to participate in that vision. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, look at Revelation 18. Revelation 18. Can I tell you something interesting? If you look at Numbers 19 about the complete burning of the body and even the dung, perhaps, of this red heifer, Dr. Ruckman puts a footnote there and compares that with Revelation 18, Babylon. Now look at Revelation chapter 18. I don't know if he had something in mind or if he was just simply cross-referencing the words about completely burning the flesh. But this is going to be interesting. If this is a fake thing, you got to realize this. Remember, the burning of the red heifer represents purification, cleansing. Babylon, the, the Antichrist, will come out of where? He's going to come out of Rome, Babylon. And then Babylon is dressed up in what? Scarlet red. Yeah. Scarlet red, Revelation chapter 17. Yeah. He's going to dress up in scarlet red. And then you know what God's going to do to cleanse this impure system of the Antichrist through a Roman system landing within the Jews? He's going to completely burn it off as purification. Look at Revelation chapter 18. We will read verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. You'll notice that in verse 7, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow. Give her, for she saith in our heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. You know what's very interesting about ancient Egypt? Ancient Egypt, the pagans at that time who were really close with the sons of God and demonic activity. They believe this, is that where Jew sees the red heifer as national forgiveness and cleansing, the Egyptians back then, when they see red-haired people and a red cattle, they see that as connected with Satan. When they see that connected as Satan, you know, what, uh, you know what they do? That's why they offer it up as a sacrifice. They burn it. Perhaps when Egypt is involved here, 
Perhaps when some of the pagans are involved here, they will offer Babylon as a sacrifice. Why? Because the ten kings do that. The ten kings do that. Didn't you know that? They burn her up. You're going you're gonna to look at Revelation chapter 17. Revelation 17. Verse 16. What do they do? They burn her completely and eat her flesh. Verse 17, 16, And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. By the way, how many horns? Ten horns. With their tenth heifer. Truly a whore of revelation, this red heifer. Babylon the great. Babylon the great. The whore of revelation 17. Have a nice day.